Welcome back to the More Than Logic podcast, where we connect you with entrepreneurs of all different levels. Now, if you live in Namibia, you probably know of Yango, the best, the best automobile service it's, uh, in Namibia currently. It's trending. It's everywhere. It's the only thing you want to use. Yeah. <laughs> Today, I'm joined by CJ Dumeni, the country manager for Yango, and uh, he's going to be sharing with us a lot of his insights, some hobbies, what he likes to do, what happened, how Yango started. And uh, yeah, we'll give him his time to introduce himself here. But uh, thank you for joining us today. Let's do this. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Really excited to be here, bro. Thank you. Thank yeah, you, I've, thank I've been you. watching your podcast and I think you guys are cooking up some cool stuff. Oh, shit. Yeah, thank so you. I'm honored, honored to be here. Whenever someone gives me a compliment, I just want to blush and hide <laughs> under the table. I'm serious. Nah, you guys are doing a good job. You thank you so job. much, man. Thank you so much. So first of all, I want to ask you, do you consider yourself an entrepreneur? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. I yeah. think I think that's probably the one thing I can agree on every time I try and introduce myself or something like that. I consider myself an entrepreneur. Nice, yeah. lovely. So tell us about the journey that has led to you being the country manager of Yango. Yeah, so um, yeah, I grew up in, in Vintook. Um, yeah. uh, been here pretty much my whole life. Mm -hmm. And then I went to uh, study in South Africa. Mm -hmm. I studied marketing communications, yeah. specializing in technology, mm -hmm. like um, uh, digital marketing type mm -hmm. of thing. Yeah. But I always had a touch for technology. Like I was very interested in it. In it. Um, while there, I won this like international competition for um, one of the biggest beauty brands in the world, L'Oreal. Beauty brands. Uh, yeah, L'Oreal. Uh, so yeah. they have like this marketing competition called L'Oreal Brandstorm. And um, so me and my team won that. So uh -huh. I started working for L'Oreal in Johannesburg. Yeah. Uh, I spent about a year there. Then I got this crazy idea for this app that I wanted to start. Uh, mm -hmm. It was an app called Chomi, yeah, which is supposed to be an app that would help students get like freelance tasks. So you would hire Chomi to do something. Yeah, you'd hire Chomi to come clean a yard. Hire Chomi to deliver something. Mm -hmm. Hire Chomi to you know that was the idea. Worked on it for six months. Um, quit L'Oreal against my mom's wishes, obviously. <laughs> uh, quit L'Oreal. Worked on it for six months. It was a complete, complete failure. Mm -hmm. uh, not a single Chomi was hired. And I realized that we spent, we spent more time focused on um, getting the Chomis on board than we did getting customers and people mm -hmm. who are actually going to spend money to hire these, these people. Moved back to Namibia. Uh, came back into my mom's house, you know, uh, tried to get some jobs here and there. I was the head of strategy for one agency, mm -hmm. head of content for another agency like in the marketing space. Yeah. Then uh, one day uh, in like December 2019 or so like that, um, I got this idea for a food delivery type of platform where uh, kind of changing Chomi instead of being like a hiring service to be mm. like a kind of food ordering delivery service. Yeah. It took me about two weeks to change what we had, the, the software that we're using for the previous Chomi that was mm -hmm. a failure to make it into a food delivery thing. Did that, and then that's how Chomi Bites was born. Chomi Bites yeah. was like Namibia's first food delivery app. So, really? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I ran that for about three years. Um, it got to the point where I just had to, I realized that running a tech company is super expensive, mm -hmm. like really expensive. You have to do it at scale. You have to be looking at a market with 10 million people mm -hmm. plus because yeah. it's like taking the same yeah. project and yeah. like sending it out. So I did that. And at the end of 2022, we decided to close Chomi Bites just because the margins didn't make sense. The business was super expensive. And in, in this, essentially, it was another failure, to be mm -hmm. honest. It was another failure. We yeah. got investment and so on, but we couldn't pull it off in that way. Yeah. And after going through like a short depression, I got a, a random DM from on LinkedIn from yeah. a company that was just like, yo, we want to expand into Namibia and we see that you're one of the only people with like this kind of tech app yeah. uh, knowledge and you ran a food delivery app and so on. Could we partner and see what we can do? Um, luckily enough, I was in a, in a, it did look suspicious. I was, <laughs> yeah, of course, looked, you just get a random really deal. It really suspicious. Yeah. And I was like, what kind of company? Because mm. I never heard of Yango before. Yeah. And it's such, uh, a, it sounds like such, a, such an African name, to be honest, from yeah. my side. <laughs> and to find it in other countries, I'm like, Wait, what? Yeah, so I never heard yeah. about it before, so I was very hesitant. Mm -hmm. But luckily, I responded. And we launched Django in Namibia 
and uh, in February, the last day of February 2023. Mm. And now we're the number one right hailing app in the country. Yeah. And also, I wasn't then, lying when I started my interview. You weren't, you weren't lying. Good. According, <laughs> according to users' votes, yeah. um, we took part in the Best of Namibia kind of user, um, not users, but public vote competition. Mm. And yeah, we were voted first in our category. So that's I'm nice. It's glad, glad to say that. So yeah, it's, been, it's definitely been a journey. But all it's weird, like all the failures that I went through before kind of put me in a great position to be able to lead Yango mm. in Namibia specifically. Yeah. So I definitely think uh, it paid it, it uh, paid out yeah. in that aspect. That's good. That's good. And what do you think sets you apart from the competition at this point in time? Man, I think we have, number one, we we probably have the best understanding of the market. Mm -hmm. And I also think we have the best team. Uh, best so team. Yango, it's, yeah. not, it's not just people that are in Europe or in Dubai telling the market what to do. It's led by local teams. Like mm -hmm. I have five people that work under me and we are on the ground every single day making sure that Yango works well, you know? So mm -hmm. I think it's that that impact that makes a huge difference in the market. We can understand and we can yeah. be like, drivers are not gonna be happy about this, you know? Even yeah. if it, the data says something, uh, we can tell that um, drivers are not gonna be happy about this. Clients won't be happy about this because mm -hmm. we are local and we're, I take I take Yango every single day. I don't I don't I don't own a vehicle. Yeah. I make sure that so I can understand how people are experiencing it. You know, mm. um, I take it every single day. Nice, nice. That's lovely to hear. I think one thing I can say for sure, I've noticed that all the drivers that do in driver, um, yeah, I think mainly now it's in driver Yango, and I don't know what else is there. Leffa is more of a different business model. Yeah, uh, I've noticed that all the drivers prefer using Yango to InDriver. And I, of course, it's mainly the feature that uh, there's no there's no platform to negotiate prices as well. I think yeah. they like that. It's a, they know, okay, what Yango getting. is going to give them good prices. Mm. From the consumer end, um, I'm still trying to figure out yeah, what customers really like about the product because I've also tried to, you know, to read up a little bit about it. So that's quite interesting now that you speak about the drivers as well yeah. and not just the customer because I think the drivers play a big, important role in, in, in your product because if the drivers are not there, you then no one customers. would drive. Yeah, so it's quite interesting. And the response time for Yango is why well, I like pretty much because normally I get the car a car in less than five minutes. Yeah, like yeah. two. I think our ETA is like two, three minutes. Two, three minutes. Yeah. That's crazy. That's, 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 that's crazy. impressive, right? Yeah, that's imagine a lot of cars on the road as well. Yeah. Exactly. And can you imagine just going out in anywhere you need to be, you can get a car in two minutes. Yeah. Most of the times, last year or two years ago, if you told any Namibian that, they'll be like, no way. Mm -hmm. You know, even if you're ordering from other, our, any of our competitors, you wait at least 10, 15 minutes, yeah. you know, to, for the car to come. Yeah, yeah, true, true. And so what's your take on uh, moving on into Swakop as well and other cities? Is yeah, very that, excited yeah. about that, actually. I think the coast is um, a market that's um, growing mm -hmm. with all these um, findings of business, like oil that's happening yeah. there. Um, I mean, the oil findings and everything's going to generally go through Wellfish Bay or mm. through the Ritz or Ranyamun. So the port areas are very important. So seeing a lot of growth in Wapish Bay. I was actually there last week uh, there for some meetings, but I stayed longer just to see how the market is yeah. and to make sure that we have the right um, strategy and the right people on the ground to make sure yeah. that it, it can take off, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's quite nice because I think I can, I remember a friend of mine was laughing with me. He was like, ah, we only have one Yango in Sokop. And I'm like, what do you mean you only have one Yango? Like, how can you know the only Yango that you have? There? She was right, though. But now there are <laughs> a few more coming in. coming. So it was back when the app was still new, I think. Exactly. Yeah. And so now, yes, let's move a bit more forward to what core values guide your actions and decisions? Like as a person? As a person, yeah. Yeah, that's such a good question. Yeah. <laughs> what core values drive my actions and yeah. decisions? Yeah. Um, there are three things that I kind of, tell myself I want to be mm -hmm. when I I wrote down on the paper like three things I want to be known for I want to be yeah. first one is I want to be generous I want to be seen as someone that gives more than they they take uh third one is I uh, mean second one is I want to be courageous I really want to approach life from a perspective of taking big risks I want people to kind of look back and think Oh man, that was really impressive. But because of how brave and courageous the act was, you know, so I'm usually going towards taking big steps rather than smaller steps. Um, and then the third one is I want to be curious. 
I don't want to be the person in the room where I know everything. I want to be in, ro- in a room where I can learn something from someone else. So constantly asking questions, really interested in people's hobbies or um, what they do for fun or their insight and so on. So those are the kind of the three things that I want to mimic. I don't know if it directly answers your question, but that's like the first the first things that came to yeah. mind. Yeah. yeah, nice. Yeah. It does say a lot about you. I think uh, we'll leave the psychologist to do the psychology. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I think it is it is a, it is a good answer yeah. because it has made me think as well. Because I remember sitting on the couch at home a while back, and I was also thinking, what do I want to be remembered for? And I think it was somewhere along the lines of I just want people to feel that they had a better life with me in it than yeah. without. And, yeah. so, you know, if wh- whoever I meet, what can I do for them? And I think it's this giver mentality that Absolutely. you're speaking of. You know, taking is easy and you can take as much as you want. But I think giving is is more rewarding. It's like those that take eat well yeah. and those that give sleep better at night, <laughs> you know. That's a good, that's a good, that's a good uh, phrase. I've never heard that one before. Yeah, really yeah, nice. Ah. But- oh. Now I'm putting you on as well. <laughs> no, no, but I good. think you're absolutely right, man. And I mm. think I think just getting into the mentality of understanding it is better to give than mm. to receive. And I sometimes it's hard to contextualize that properly, but from what I've what I've what I've seen and what I've learned just in general in career, in life, yeah. being a person that walks into a room that's trying to bring the most value as possible or mm. anything that you have to give mm-hmm. and you, you want to give that, most of the times yeah. you get we get that in return like yeah. tenfold, you know. So yeah, interesting. So yeah, that's that's something that I really uh, want to be and uh, like focus on. Yeah, nice. That makes me happy, man. Yeah. Uh, I also want to know, um, you know, you're you're a pretty young guy. Yeah. That's a fact. Yeah. <laughs> How do you deal now with you know dealing with all these older people, meetings, you know, the the grown men with the beards, the white beards, and yeah. everything. Hey, that's a, you, you know, that's a really good. That's a really good question. <laughs> yeah. And I think. It's kind of like that uh, imposter syndrome kind yeah. of thing, you know, yeah. uh, where it's like I'm too young mm-hmm. or I'm, am I supposed to be in this room? Do I know enough? Mm-hmm. And so on. Um, I, how I deal with it is I specifically put myself in those rooms because the only way you'll be able to understand what's required to operate in those spaces is if you put yourself in there. So I mentally prepare and understand that I'm going into a room and I probably know the least yeah. Out of like we're speaking like let's say politics, mm-hmm. or we're speaking about laws, or we're speaking about um, um, regulations and stuff like that, where my background doesn't necessarily um, put me in good stead for that. Mm-hmm. I understand that I'm going into this room. I don't know what's there, but I'm curious enough to find out. And the only way I'll find out is if I'm in those rooms, you know. So there's no point of avoiding it. So, and and the truth is. Even those guys in those rooms, like the, like you said, the big older guys with the, with the white beards and so on, they're also just figuring it out. <laughs> like they know a lot, yeah. but every day they're figuring something out. Yeah. And I realized that even the people you look up to don't know what they're doing. They're just trying to figure it out. So I, I, I push myself to get into those rooms specifically to uh, to learn, mm-hmm. to learn. So I see it as a learning opportunity. I don't, I'm not, I'm not scared of it because, yeah, yeah I realize that you. You you fill up this you f- you only fill up the space that you can walk into you know so um, going to bigger spaces mm-hmm. then you'll be able to fill it up so mm-hmm. that's kind of how I think about it yeah that's quite interesting to to look at it like that I think for me I would definitely say also an important thing is just be up transparent with things you know yes, as, especially with guys like that. yeah and say you don't know like oh what is this they're yeah. talking about something and be like I don't know what this is can, yeah. can someone explain what yeah. it is instead of Acting like you know everything. Yeah, yeah true. I Trying agree. to fake it. Yeah, I that's going to get you shot in the foot. Because most of them, surprisingly, a lot of them will understand the fact that you're young. There's, a, there's just some things that you won't know. Absolutely. You know, and it's, our, and it's their responsibility to show you. And it's yeah, that's also, I think, something I've learned as well. Because I've had to sit in, sit in meetings where it's just grown people. And I'm like, what the hell am I going to say yeah, here? Yeah. And then they're so accommodating, so nice. They're like, oh, yeah, 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 this, 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 that. Oh, and I think... Do you know yeah. what? Do you know one thing I think that could be valuable to to mm. kind of highlight here? When when I told you I I, I won that marketing competition for L'Oreal, yeah. right? What we had to do was create a digital innovation um, and a product line to kind of match digital, digital innovation, product line, and strategy for mm. for L'Oreal men 
was like the L'Oreal men's line. Right? Okay. So we happened and happened to be a group with only three black guys in the class. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what we did is we created something that was specifically unique to us. We created something for black male millennials, like yeah. black men, not yeah. just overall L'Oreal men. We said we're going to create something for black men. The reason why we won is because even when we went when we went to uh, Paris, because we presented our ideas to Paris uh, to the L'Oreal executives in Paris. Yeah. So these are I'm talking about like multi multi billionaires, yeah. right? Big big boys. When we presented our ideas there, it was very interesting to see that even though they were extremely knowledgeable and knew their market better than we did, we had some insight that they didn't have, mm-hmm. right? Because even though we're like 20-year-olds from yeah. South Africa uh, or Southern Africa yeah. in Paris presenting to the, like, this, the, number one, the number one beauty brand in the world, uh-huh. L'Oreal, we had insight they didn't have, and which was that black men, our grooming doesn't start at home in the bathroom. It starts at the barber shop. Yeah, true. When you yeah. want to get fresh, yeah. you don't think, let me go into and the bathroom yeah. and like trim myself or whatever. Yeah. Nah. It's like, what time can reason, I go to my barber? What time can yeah. I go to my barber? So we cater the experience towards that. So yeah. your everyone, everyone on this earth generally has a unique perspective. And it's I'm trying to identify what that is and bringing that value forward every single time. So that's mm-hmm. how we're able to present there and be hired immediately. Yeah. We're all hired to yeah. specifically work on African beauty brands yeah. because they realize that this is some these things here we don't know. Mm-hmm. So even if you're young or uh, you're from uh, deep in the Bundus <laughs> and you know like yeah. uh, <laughs> Rundu or yeah. someone where people do, place where people don't usually go, yeah. there's some unique insight that you have that mm-hmm. if you mm-hmm. if you understand it and bring it forward and not try and play by what. Um, by what the market already knows, but what you what you know, you yeah. know, um, there's a huge advantage, a huge huge advantage, yeah. and I think that's what that's what allows us as young people to sit at the table with older people who are making decisions because we have context they don't have, yeah. you know. Yeah, that's pretty good because I was also speaking to uh, Delia, a lady called Delia, the yeah. founder of Web Tickets Namibia. She was saying yesterday that. Uh, it's really important in entrepreneurship to to fall in love with the problems, like really focus on the problems because sometimes you often focus on the on your solution, what you're building in. And so it's like... That's really good advice. Yeah. It's like... Tell is very smart. Yeah. <laughs> it's, <laughs> very smart. It's like there's the... We could give an example of the, the L'Oreal, right? Yeah. I mean, the L'Oreal, the product itself is lotions, beauty products. Yeah. But the problem, on the other hand, for what you had now is that black men don't do their... Grooming. So the grooming at home. Yeah, exactly. And so if you only focused on the product itself, like what can L'Oreal do? You'd be like, oh, let's try maybe putting in argan oil. Maybe yeah. they'll like that. If we put in coconut oil, maybe they'll like that. And you try so many products, it's so expensive. Rather than just going deeper into the problem, which is black men don't do their grooming at home. So let's just nice. the barbershop. Yeah. 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 I yeah. Really let's like have the ch- products at the barbershop. Uh. Let's sell the products to the barbers. Mm-hmm. So when they're after the... the the haircut they can yeah. wash. Yeah. We actually wanted to do like smart interactive smart mirrors yeah. and stuff. There's a lot of stuff. But yeah, yeah I I, I, it's, I get exactly what you're saying. Yeah. The problem is the problem is what you should focus on. Yeah, interesting. Absolutely. And how would you say that that same uh, mentality looking at the problem plays a role in Yango as well? Mm-hmm. What would you say the problem for Yango is? I think the the problem in the market in general is that people wanted safe, affordable transportation. Yeah. That was the problem. Okay, and the idea is okay. How do you how do you guarantee that? Mm-hmm. Oh shit! That's it. <laughs> shit! Oh my god! Recording. Okay, thank you, our lovely loyal viewers. We just had to fix the plow. Hey, the flower pot that you saw falling here. I'm just gonna repeat the question that I asked you, CJ. Uh, it was so. How does the looking at the problem and focusing yeah. on the problem uh, play a role now in Yango? And I already asked you that actually. And so now it's um, what was so the question was how does it play a role in Yango? Mm-hmm. And you mentioned that uh, people want a safety and 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 affordability and affordability. So, yeah, the, Continue on that. The, yes, the, please. The main problem in the market from from a taxi perspective was there was no place to get a really safe and affordable um, ride. Yeah. So 
the, the thinking before with transportation was mm. let's make sure we back check and filter everyone that's getting into the space. So, for example, all the taxi drivers that are on the road today, they had to go through a vigorous um, um, sign-up process, a mm-hmm. permitting process. They had to, number one, get a um, background check. Yeah. They had to get um, all go through all the things that the law requires them to get permits, right? And it's a lot. It has something to do with getting your driver's license, uh, the right driver's license, getting, like, eye checks and all these things, all these things. Mm-hmm. And But, however, what that that does not do is guarantee safe safe transportation because yes. it's till this day no one would really want their 16 year old daughter to take a taxi by herself at night of course of right? course yeah so so we looked at the solution we looked at the problem um to understand okay first of all the transportation has to be safe right so how do we do that using technology we're able to add a very very high level of transparency right so when you order a Yango, you get to know exactly who the driver is. You get the picture. You get their number plate, their phone number, um, the color of the vehicle, what the vehicle is. You get all the information you get. So transparency doesn't necessarily um, guarantee safety, but it does guarantee accountability. Mm-hmm. Right? If I take a, t- a street taxi today and something happens in there, I don't know who the driver is. Right? Yeah. I don't know his name. I don't know... Uh, I may not even remember the car. I might remember the numbers on there, but the process to get the information to be able to get the actual driver that I was with is a very long process, right? So with the technology, the transparency that we have really makes uh, it uh, easy for us to to hold drivers or anyone who participates in this transaction accountable, Mm -hmm. right? Um, Something happens, we can act on it super quickly. We know exactly where they are. We know exactly who the driver is. We know exactly what car they're driving. We also know who exactly the car client was, where they are, what happened. And we can, if, if it escalates, we can take it to the police super quickly, yeah. right? So that's the reason why it's safe. The reason why the roads are safe, for example, um, there's nothing stopping yeah. you from crossing a red light. It's all psychological. So you see the red light. Physically, there's nothing stopping me. But you understand that if I cross this red light, there's a lot of risks, mm-hmm. right? I could hit someone else. To be hold accountable if there's a cop there, I'm going to be stopped or yeah. something's going to happen. It's the same thing. So with with the platform, we monitor and we get feedback from clients and from drivers uh, keep to keeping them ac- accountable, mm-hmm. right? So it's like a self-regulating kind of system, like the lights. Yeah. Uh, like the same way a red light works. Drivers mm-hmm. know if I do ABCD, I'm going to get, someone's going to see it and I'm going to be held responsible for it. So they're, they're more inclined to to try and be better, try and be better drivers and uh, not take as many risks as they would with no one's watching, you know? Yeah. So that's one part. That's the accountability part and the transparency part. Uh, affordability has to do with the, the, the technology and the scale. Because we're able to connect someone that is available in a certain region and someone who wants to go somewhere in that exact reason, region, we can charge less prices because the driver doesn't have to go far to pick up people. Right. That's that the car sharing now. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So um, the prices are cheaper when there are more drivers available closer to the to the to the customer, mm. because they don't have to travel long distances in order to to um, to pick them up, drop them off, and then come back look for clients yeah. or something like that. So drivers are saving a lot on fuel. Yeah. They're only moving when there's a reason to move. You yeah. know, when there's a customer available. So yeah. we look at the market. We look at what customers are looking to. To um, to pay, um, and then we find a way to we find a way to match what drivers what drivers need from an earning perspective. So the technology is really the uh, part that the algorithm we use is really the part that makes it affordable. So when you combine those two things, you have a really safe and affordable system. So that's why it worked in this market. Um, but other uh, some of our competitors didn't take the same approach, yeah. you know. And there's a lot of things that are missing. So. And also understanding this local context in general. Yeah. So I think that's kind of how we looked at the problem, and um, the the angle solution really worked for 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 to solve that that exact problem. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. It, I think that is that is I think a good approach. Now you you've passed a year, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think the next few years will be the test of time. Exactly. Test of time. Exactly. So I think I'm excited as well to see where you guys are headed. Yeah. But also. Uh, you know, I really like, uh, so 
when you have these kind of younger prices that you have, it gets cheaper mostly when people travel in groups as well, right? Absolutely. And that they, I think for the singular people, yeah, I don't know. Do you think there could be ever a time where you guys could move to electric cars? Um, yeah, I mean, why, why not? I mean, know? that means higher margins, possibly lower prices as well. I have a connection to electric vehicles. So how, 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 <laughs> how Yango works is we don't work directly with the drivers. Of course. We have local uh, transportation companies yeah. that, are, that are hiring these drivers, managing the drivers, yeah. outsourcing the drivers. Yeah. Um, they do everything um, from a driver management perspective. Ah, we yeah. are a software provider. We're yeah. a tech company. Yeah. Yeah. We, we don't just do like ride hail as well. Mm. We have... Um, we have multiple other products, mm-hmm. like 40 other products that we offer in, in different markets. We have a rental app, Yango Drive. We have um, a travel app. We have our own maps. We have like Yango Play for games. We have Yango like movies, where almost like Netflix. There's so many other products that Yango as a tech company offers. So what we do is we offer this taxi um, software yeah. to local companies to grow their businesses. Oh, you know? So that's how it works. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, I thought you also did the driver yeah. management. So I could then just come with my own driver management company and then have electric cars, higher profit margin. 100%. That. That's Crazy. completely up to you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's good to know. Now, let's move to another topic. Sure. Uh, we it. could speak about Yango all day. <laughs> what movie left a lasting impression on you? What movie? Yeah, movie. You just spoke of uh, movies now. <laughs> yeah. two, two, two come to mind. Mm. First one is a movie called Limit Limitless. I don't know if you've watched it. It's a movie about a guy that takes a pill and then he becomes like the smartest guy um, ever. It's like it allows you to access like 100% of your brain. Mm. Almost similar to this one with Scarlett Johansson. I can't remember the name of it. But yeah. Limitless is, I always say, is my favorite movie. Because okay. I think there were certain aspects of it that kind of just resonated with it. One, someone who's, he was a writer, right? And he was struggling to write a book. And then someone came to him and said, yo, there's this new pill that's out. Um, if you take it, you'll be able to finish it. And do it. he took it, accessed 100% of his brain. It was flying. Like, yeah. one, like the book was so good. One of book deals and so on and so on. Okay, yeah. So it's like, it's kind of this, also has this kind of entrepreneur yeah. story yeah. to it. It's like you're trying and trying to figure it out. And then there was a secret hack, right, uh-huh. which is the, the pill. But at the same time, the pill was so addictive. And it was so good that it became so addictive that people really started like fighting and 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 like scrappling for it, and also it would it would kill you. Mm. It was it was a kind of it was a kind of pill that over time it would it would kill you. Yeah. you know? So the mindset there was okay. so, yeah. it's all good. <laughs> so yeah. the mindset there was two things. One. This journey is exciting, you know, and and it's going to be fun and you're going to struggle and so on. But the shortcut, which is the pill, um, in the end will kill you, you know. Yeah. So there's, there's no way to get there without taking the long way, the long way yeah. around, you know. Um, but I also liked the fact that he tried, at the end of the day, he figured it out without the pill. Mm-hmm. Um, but... That journey and everything around the movie and like accessing 100% of your brain, a lot of interest for me. And mm. I usually like movies that have to do with uh, time travel as well. Yeah. Um, those type of movies are super cool. So yeah. that movie is another movie called Source Code. Great movie. I don't know if you watched yeah. it. Uh, and a movie called Tenet. Time travel movie. It's been wrapping my brain. for. Mm. I watched it maybe four times. I still haven't figured it out completely. Yeah. So yeah, those are my kind of movies. Okay, interesting. I like yeah, it. Yeah. I think for me it would be Moneyball. And why do you like Moneyball so much? Moneyball because they were using these uh, data anal- data analytics yeah. to to you know to change the game of baseball. Yeah, I, you watch Moneyball. I haven't watched it. Yeah, so it's a it's a base it's a game of a baseball coach. His team has been win- losing for quite a while, actually, yeah. and um, so they're trying to figure out a way to win. Yeah. Then he meets this one guy who's a data analyst. Yeah, and he's like. Um, yeah, this is what your players are doing wrong. It's like they just meet randomly. It's like, aren't you the coach? And it's like, yeah, yeah, I'm the coach, but your team should start doing this. Yeah. And then he's like, look at these papers. Um, this is what I've looked at over the last few games. This is what this does wrong. You're you're putting all the best players in the same team, but uh, all the best players 
in the same team don't necessarily mean the best yeah, results. Yeah, the best results. So you have to put this kind of person over here. So no one listens to that that guy in the beginning. But then later on, the coach is like, you know what? Let me bring in. Yeah, bring him in, and they try so and they try. In the end, you know, it it changes the whole game. They break so many records in one oh, wow. game. So that's what? what I like about okay, it. I'm gonna watch it. Yeah, Moneyball. I'll send like, it to you. Like my kind of my kind of movie. Yeah, and then the McDonald's movie yeah, as, I well. Like that as well. That one that is nice. Movie. Yeah, and the Facebook movie. I the love face- those type of movies. Yeah, the those. McDonald's one, the Facebook, uh, Facebook one. There's also another one about Uber. Uh-huh. Um, it's actually a series. Yeah. Quite interesting. Um, yeah. I'll, those, I like those kind of movies as well. Yeah. Entrepreneurial kind of story yeah, type of movies. That's what I like yeah. as well. Yeah. What insecurities do you have, if there are any, that you're willing to share? Oh, such a good question. Insecurities. Yeah. One of one of my insecurities is that um, I struggle to be present at times. So basically, I'm always in my head. So I'm never really... I'm never really... Um, in my shoes and like in the room. So I struggle to kind of connect, uh, even though they call me the connect, I struggle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I actually I actually do struggle to to be present and just enjoy the moment with 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 people. Mm. And the reason why that's that's an insecurity because I don't want people to feel like, oh I was speaking to him, but he wasn't there. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like people leave conversations, sometimes leave conversations with me and think he was he wasn't present at all. Like didn't seem like he cared, you yeah. know. And I was tr- and I'm 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 specifically trying to improve that. And I think that's actually why I want to be seen as like the connect or um, sharing advice on how to like build relationships, build networks, have better conversations because it's something that I'm trying to figure out for myself. And that's, that's why, um, the second one would be is, um, I'm actually dyslexic. Okay. So, so I, I struggle with, um, reading and writing all the time. Like if you text me, you'll see, I'll have million typos. Right. Yeah. So it's something that I can't control and my brain takes a long time to process, uh, those things. But so interestingly enough, I did something similar. Like I told you, I was uh, when we were chatting earlier. I'm spending quite a bit of time working on copywriting now. Uh. I want to be a great, great copywriter, uh. Uh, a dis- like a dyslexic copywriter, <laughs> you know, which sounds like it contradicts itself. But I think the fact that I'm dyslexic uh, makes me need to focus more on the certain aspects of telling stories and, mm-hmm. and so on. So my next move and my next focus is to build a. Uh, Uh, create content on text-based platforms Mm -hmm. like LinkedIn, Twitter, maybe email, anything where the heavy part, the heavy lifting is text. Yeah. I want to figure that out and get good. So I kind of, yeah, I think those are part of my insecurities. I kind of look at my insecurities and see how I can use it to my advantage, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I think those are the two things that came to mind. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. That's, that's, that's nice. Yeah. What, What has been the biggest challenge of your life so far? Oof. Biggest challenge of my life. And what did you learn from it? That's such a good question. Yeah. I think the biggest challenge of my life probably was finishing high school. Mm. Yeah, because I was I was uh I was held back quite a few times because I was dyslexic by that time I didn't know. Mm. So finishing high school was actually really, really tough. I think I was held back like four times. Yeah, and it was genuinely a point where I thought I wouldn't, I wouldn't finish. Like it would just be stuck in high school mm. forever. You know? Crazy. Yeah, genuinely, yeah. genuinely. Like so, what what that period taught me, very interestingly enough, and it only makes sense when I look back at it. I was struggling in school, but I've always been like a people's person, a people's yeah. person. So what I did was. Um, I was always building people skills. Like yeah. I was friends with everyone in class. I was friends with like the principal and the uh, monitors and supervisors and yeah. stuff like that. Um, so when it came to a point, and this this turning point actually happened um, the holiday after my dad passed. So my dad passed um, like ten days after my eighteenth birthday, mm-hmm. right? So now I had to go back to school. I should have been out of school already, but I've been held back so many times yeah. already. I'll, Another year now, I'm like, snap, I'm still here, yeah. you know? Then I had I had a conversation with uh, my principal. 
right? I was thinking I have to do something to make to get out of here. I had a conversation with my principal, and I managed to convince this man to let me take my books home and kind of exclusively do homeschool, um, and only come back for like tests and stuff like that, right? Because I knew if I got into my own space, I would be able to learn. Because I usually learn and study with music, and yeah. you can't do that in school. So I guess I don't know if it helps because dyslexia or what I don't know in general. But I think being being distracted in some aspects helps. Anyway, mm. so. I managed to convince this man to allow me to go home and work on my books from home. And he said yes. And it's something that he hasn't really done for anyone before. It was mm. against the rules, yeah. technically, of the school. But I guess he understood that, hey, man, this guy has to leave school at some point. At least he can try it, you know. <laughs> Did that. And I managed to finish. Somehow, it's still, it's weird. Like, it's still vague for me. I don't know. I can't tell you the specific moment where I finished. Yeah, yeah. But... Within a two-year period, I managed to finish all the books that I needed to finish. Mm -hmm. And I went to university and just it kind of just went away. And I finished high school, got my certificate and everything passed. Everything was fine. And when I look back at it now, I'm realizing that, and especially for my career, my people skills has been the most crucial skill that I've had in any room I've, had, I've been in. Being able to be able to communicate and understand people yeah. and um, get them on your side and speak well and be presentable. Yeah. Um, that is the num a network. Yeah. Everything good that has happened to me in my life has come from someone else. Has come from someone else referring me. Or, oh, I know about this. Would you want to try it? Check out this guy. Yeah. It hasn't been it hasn't been from my my own efforts. Uh, it's interesting. All, it all come from that. So yeah, that's that's I think is the the main lesson for me. Um, the way, like, even though the challenge of school, mm -hmm. even though uh, academic-wise I struggled, yeah. um, I guess EQ-wise or, like, people-wise, I was really building up some skill, and I started to use that across the board. And now I understand that that's, that's my superpower, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I use that in everything I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Um, and so it leads me to want to ask the question, what have you learned about dealing with people? I've learned that people just want to be understood mm -hmm. and heard and felt like they their opinion matters. I think the same thing that we want to feel from other people is what other people want yeah. want to feel from us. So being able to position position ourselves in a in a place to be curious enough to actually care about yeah. what. Uh, what people are doing, yeah. you know, like, um, like me just trying to figure out like how's things with your podcast, you know, yeah. how's that going, yeah. you know, um, you don't want to be here and just chat about me the whole time. <laughs> Realistically, yeah. you you also want to like, oh yeah, this is going well, this is mm. what's happening. Um, changing in we're in a new space now. The camera yeah. equipment's better. Yeah. The sounds better. You know, <laughs> all these things. Yeah. You know? So, I think that's what that's what um, that's what people want. Yeah. But also a hack. Hack, I'm going to give you a free hack. Yes. Man. A free hack. I'm all ears. I've noticed, and this is so left field, but I've noticed the number one way to connect with new people or to build new relationships is not to appear like you're something you're not, but to dive deeper into your interests. There's certain things that you're interested in. For example, I am fascinated with watches, fascinated yeah. with Formula One, fascinated with a few things in this world that generally just pull my attention yeah. in communication. Diving deeper into those things um, gives you enough context and knowledge about them that when you come across people and you speak about the things you're passionate about, number one, most likely you're going to run into people that are also interested in the same thing. Mm -hmm. And that builds for better connections, right? Yeah. So um, if you want to be a better networker, it's not about just being... Um, going out and trying to find people to network with. It actually starts by you being going deeper into your interests, things yeah. that you're interested in. I promise you, you will find so many people that are as curious about it as you. And if you have the most knowledge in the room, that makes you super interesting. Yeah. And I always use this example. If you're looking to talk to the president, the president is more likely to build a better connection with you if you guys are in the same running club yeah. than if you guys are both in politics. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So similarities don't work as well as interests. So 
look at your interests. And yeah. it's, it's, it's kind of left field because it doesn't seem like that's the way to go about it. But the way I found myself, like I just took a trip from Japan. I mean, I took a trip to Japan. And the Japanese are super interesting people. They're the most fascinating people I've met because they go fully into their interests. You'll find a 60-year-old man who's obsessed with anime. Completely. <laughs> that's funny. Completely. That's funny, man. And his yeah. work, what he does on the weekends, um, everything around his association yeah. is anime. He loves it. He really yeah. loves it. And he, he knows all the history about it. Right? But that will also be the most fascinating conversation I'll come across when I go to, when I, if I come across this man. You yeah. Know? yeah. So, um, going deeper into your interests is, yeah. is, the, is the way to do it. And I'm trying to figure that out for yeah. myself what that looks like as well. Yeah. I find it quite, uh, or I like the fact that you mentioned people's opinions when you were saying uh, people want their opinions to be heard yeah. and all that. Because it, when you really think about it, even when, when, even when we're wrong, most of the times we think we're right. Exactly. You know, uh, we really want our opinions to be heard. When you're, you're shouting at the top of your lungs, you're repeating the same thing, you're wrong. Mm. But you still want you to be want heard. To, you yeah. just want to be heard. Yeah, and the second thing I would say is when I hear you speak about connecting with people, interests and everything, I think it reminds me of this one sent statement that I heard from um, from a previous, uh, he's a psychologist. I could call him a mentor as well because mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time speaking to him as well. Very wise guy. And he says, you know, Ignatius, if you really want to connect with people, I'll give you a secret. Mm -hmm. It's called the 101 percent rule. So, okay. Well, yeah. That's interesting. I'm so, what? Stuff, yeah. My stuff. <laughs> nice, nice. So, what you do is you find the one percent of the one thing that mm -hmm. people really like and mm -hmm. are interested in, mm -hmm. and you give that your hundred percent. Okay. So you find the one percent. Yeah. The one thing that yeah, mm -hmm. which is one percent, I guess. Okay. But the one thing that people really like. Okay. And then you give that your hundred percent. Oh, I yeah. see. So when you're meeting with someone, yeah. you ask them to find out the yeah. one thing that they really yeah. like. So oh. the first challenge is just, you know, the asking the questions, the everything. It's just, you know, doing that, that that's, hunt, that's the, really you know, smart. the scattering through, finding out what do people like. It's like when I speak to you, and mm. now I know, okay, if we spoke about watches, basketball, and, and tech, <laughs> you know, we might have a conversation absolutely, going. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know. So that's quite interesting as well. I call it the one-on-one -on -one or I like that. Yeah. That's a really that's a, that's a really good a really good um way of thinking. Yeah, I but think I think paired, a, yeah, paired together with what you said as well is I think it's because, the same thing. Yeah. You listen know, it's like you meet the president, it's like what are you gonna speak about? Yeah. You know, like, you gotta find out what, what the person genuinely likes. Yeah. And uh, but when I think what I was trying to say and uh, I think the one hundred the one and the one hundred percent actually adds up because the one is finding yeah. out what they what they yeah. like, the one yeah. percent. And then the one hundred is you giving your full effort. Your full, your full effort into yeah. it and finding out. So you yeah. can also do that for yourself, right? Yeah. Like find out what you really like and have enough context. You uh -huh. know, if you if you like um, tennis, yeah. don't just know two things about it. You know, you like of it. Course, so yeah. Be curious and go yeah. deeper to figure out why do I like it and deep dive into uh -huh. it. You know, you yeah. make for better conversation. Definitely, definitely. I wanna I wanna eventually I think we might do it now as well. I want to speak to you about watches. Talk to watches. me. You've been, I, th I feel like you've been waiting for that moment to no. really speak about watches. Yeah, I know. I love speaking about, yeah. Yeah, I speak about, yeah. about watches. Let me just double anything. check. Vitura, how are we doing on time? Okay, that's good. Yeah. That's a good chat about time. Sure, yeah, sure, 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 sure. <laughs> and, and watches. So you recently traveled to Japan. Yes. And I think partially the reason for going there was also you wanted to go meet the people that make the Ko Koei watches. Ku Kuo. Kuo. Kuo watches. Correct. Correct. And I know for a fact that you came back with a watch and they call it the Psycho Killer. The, the Psycho, Psycho Killer. Psycho, 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 Psycho Killer. Yeah. Psycho, Psycho Killer. So, yeah. the so Psycho you, know, killer. you know the brand Seiko? Seiko. Seiko watches? Mm -mm. Slim. Oh, wait, no, yes, I do, I do. Exactly. Yeah, Seiko they're calling, watches. So they're calling it the Seiko Killer. That's why. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Um, first, let me give you a brief, brief context, because I think you need to understand yeah. why Japan. Why Japan, And yes. And this will also make you understand why I'm super fascinated about watches. Yeah. Okay, so... In the 1930s, 20s, um, 40s probably, mm -hmm. you couldn't go to a shop and buy a watch. It didn't, that, that structure didn't exist. You had to go to a watchmaker. Mm -hmm. okay? And the idea is this is someone that studied 20, 30 years to be able to create a little machine. Yeah. Right? 
using no technology. They didn't have um, software or anything back then. It's literally a little machine that can keep track of time. Okay. Yeah. So there are a few watch houses that kind of got really good at this. Um, Audemars Piguet, Vershawn Constantine, yeah. Patek Philippe. These are the brands that have been around for like 100 plus years, right? Yeah, yeah. They're the ones that kind of were known as the best watchmakers. So you would go to this watchmaker and he will make a watch for you and your family. Most of the times it was the men that yeah. had it. Remember they used to have pocket watches? Yes. Yeah, yes, that's yes. why it was so valued because you couldn't just walk anywhere and buy a pocket watch. At some point, obviously, they started to see that, oh, there's a demand for this. So we can have ready prepared ones. So you can see what you like and so on and so on. This continued up until the 1960s, 1970s. Mm -hmm. During the 70s, these watchmakers were um, having ready-made watches, really good designs, beautiful, but it was still really expensive because it it had to be handcrafted. In the 1970s, the Japanese came up with something called a quartz watch which is a watch with a battery in it. Every watch that you see today that has a battery in it is is thanks to the Japanese. Mm-hmm. So they created a watch that has a battery in it um, then works with a quartz crystal. So what, what that allowed them to do was be able to create watches that were much cheaper and also much quicker. So that's where this off-the-shelf watch buying behavior really came. Yeah. Right? But it disrupted the watch industry completely. Completely. Because yeah. these big guys, they have to spend months sometimes designing a watch um um crafting it making it as a machine and everything right like it's literally a little machine and then the japanese come up with something that they can do a watch in maybe uh, a couple a week or or even quicker obviously got a lot quicker yeah and that's why most of the watches that everyone has on their wrist has a battery in it because of the japanese so it's some it calls something called the quartz crisis Uh right and seiko was part of the people that actually uh, contributed to that, the brand Seiko, which is a Japanese brand, yeah. the oldest Japanese brand. Yeah. So it caused, it caused the quartz crisis. And from there, we had this two, we have these two channels of watches. There's uh-huh. watches that are quartz with batteries that are generally affordable, anyone can have, and it takes time, actually more accurate. Uh-huh. Um, and then you get the automatic watches, automatic and um, uh, mechanical watches. That's what they're called, mechanical, the ones that the, the watchmaker would have to design. And that this is where the Rolex, Patek, um, Audemars Piguet, and so on yeah. play in that space. So they kind of move towards more luxury, yeah. and 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 um, the history of the watch, watches. Yeah. And the Japanese were more around the look. Let's make it affordable and ready for everyone. So this plays out for years, for years, for years. And that's why Japan is like the second biggest hub for watches, mm-hmm. um, uh, opposed to. Still in Geneva. Uh, yeah. So Swiss made watches, all these watch brands that I mentioned before yeah. from the mechanical place uh, perspective are all made in Switzerland. Basically uh, made in Switzerland or originate from Switzerland. So the Japan play a big part in this. And Japan is actually the second, uh, like I said, the second biggest hub for watches. And it's a great place to find secondhand watches. Really? Yeah. Incredible place. Like I like secondhand the, watches. The, the condition of the watches is incredible. Yeah. I got this watch in Japan. Really? Um, yeah. So, uh, a new watchmaker comes into play, um, Kuo, and they're making um, handmade um, mechanical watches and also including quartz, yeah. and they're challenging Seiko. But their finishing and their pricing and everything is so good that um, people are like shaking in their boots, you know? Yeah. So I went to there to go see what it was like. It's incredible. These guys have an incredible setup. And what, it's kind of like what I was trying to explain to you about Formula One mm-hmm. earlier. Yeah. The amount of effort that it takes to make something so simple as tell time, you wouldn't believe it. So it's like having 20 people. Some of these companies have 300, 400 people there to be able to make something that just tells time. Yeah. It's it's the complexity and the simplicity that, that I really love about watches. Yeah. So when we went to KP and I went to um, Kyoto in, in Japan, we met the... the the watchmakers yeah. had an incredible yeah. experience. We both got a watch. Yeah. And now we have a watch that will probably, in, in 10 years, 20 years, increase in value because um, Kuo is probably going to become a bigger and bigger and bigger brand. So yeah. that's that's kind of my fascination about watches. So I gave you a bit of watch history, so you should have some. 
yeah. some more context now. Yeah. Coming to go tell the people, you know. Exactly. When you, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, that's that's quite nice. This whole watch thing. I think personally, I really like um, v- vintage watches. Yeah. You know, especially when there's a story to tell. I think a lot of watches always have a nice story. I know, for example, with Rolex that, you know, they were one of the first watches to do waterproof watches. Exactly. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's, it's, it's this whole idea that they used to have, like you mentioned now, um, that they would make a watch for your family and mm-hmm. then the man has it and you can pass it down to your son. Mm-hmm. I think there's a watch brand that still does that as well. A few watch brands, you know, they can make a watch specifically to you. Mm-hmm. I don't know which one it is, but specifically to you and you can pass it down to your son, you know, three generations later, you know, it's a pretty priceless it's, and valuable watch. Exactly. And I think that's, it's it, it's a symbol of everything in life. I think we assign meaning to anything, like yeah. anything in life. So yeah. find things that you're fascinated with and then assign, assign meaning to it. Right? Yeah. For me, for me, the nice thing about watches is also that um, mechanical watches yeah. they don't die, and they don't have a they don't have a battery. They run yeah. forever. Like okay. Rolexes don't die. If you have it on your wrist, it will run forever. And that's how is that possible? Because it's a, it's a machine. So what they have yeah. what they do is they create this machine with no power source. Yeah. It but it has a a, a, a router at uh, the back of it uh-huh. that as you move your hand, it's powering the watch. Ah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. As you move your hand, it's power. So, so kinetic builds, energy. Yeah, kinetic. Yeah. I guess kinetic energy. Yeah. So it builds up a power reserve. So, for example, most watches will have a forty-eight hour power reserve, which means that as long as you have it on your, um, if, when you take it off your hand, um, it has um, forty-eight hours of power. It will run for forty-eight hours. But if you don't, if you don't um, wind it, it's gonna stop running. But you can always continue winding it. But it's still, it's like any machine, you have yeah. to take care of it, you have to oil it, so you have to take it for service and so on. So it's some watches yeah. have like yeah. 300 individual pieces that the watchmaker crafted to put it together and create this machine that can sometimes tell like um, date, day, month, um, moon cycle, yeah. um, stopwatch. These are all complications. Yeah. So imagine, imagine how complicated it is to create something that a small machine that can keep track of the time, the date, the moon cycle, yeah. <laughs> you know, like it's unheard of. It's that's ridiculous how much effort. Those that's good. Is it, yeah. Are those the ones they call GMT watches? Uh, GMT GMT watches allows you to track two different time zones. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, you can track your time and uh, look at GMT time. You know? Okay. So uh, you can set it in a way like Rolex has a good, really good GMT. Uh, there's a couple of watches, watch bands that have other good. GMTs as well. So yeah. GMT is like a nice travel watch. You can track yeah. two different times. Yeah, cool, interesting. Um, you know, uh, I, I want to move a little bit into uh, a spicier topic. Let's talk about it. Yeah. So, CJ, you're a young guy. Yeah. Um, would, would you say, okay, for yourself, would you say you've attained financial freedom? Um, no. I wouldn't what? say I was, yeah. I've attained financial freedom, but I would say I'm financially comfortable. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that word. Financially Yeah, that's good. So that means you're able to take care of yourself and someone else. Additionally, one extra person. Yes. In your life. Probably yes. So that, uh, why I ask that is because I know for a fact you get a lot of attention from ladies. From, from these women. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Being a young guy, you dress well. You yeah. know, you your name is popping up everywhere. Associated with young guy, ev- almost everyone knows that. Yeah. Um, so. What has it been like for you in the dating pool? Um, man, it's so I recently just went went through a breakup. Uh, uh, yeah, I was, sorry, seeing, I, was, I was seeing someone, so I recently just went through a break, so recently single. Um, you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, man, I think, hey, man, we're just trying to figure it out. Mm. I think you can't have... Uh, this is actually one thing that I think I'm not so good at, yeah. um, dating and relationships. I don't have that much experience, and I think I've put a lot of effort on my career mm-hmm. that dating and romantic stuff i've i've slacked on Mm -hmm. right but i also think that in life there's seasons i know i'm going to wake up one day and i'm not going to want to go to work spend as much time in the office and i'm going to want to spend more time with someone so when that season hits i'm going to be fully in it you know so right now i'm in the season of um really building grinding and and getting building a career and building a personal brand and so on and so on but I know one day I'm gonna wake up and be like, you know what? I wanna be, I don't wanna do this as much anymore. Yeah. I wanna be with someone. Um, 
and I'll probably like get a girlfriend and get married soon or whatever. You know? Yeah, that's yeah. nice. That's we'll nice. Come. What's we'll like a, what's like a crazy experience you've had or of someone trying to hit you in the DMs or someone approaching you, Bro, hitting on you? The the only experience that I have and it's so awkward for me is like people looking at you and it's like they know you but you don't know them. You know, and they <laughs> yeah. and, and and it happens all the time uh. and they look at you like. You know when you kind of like you've seen someone's face so much, you kind of feel like, oh, I know this person, yeah. but I don't know them, bro. Yeah. And it's like, yo, it puts me. It just makes it so awkward. Yeah. Like, looking at me, and then they're like, oh, hi, CJ. Or like, oh, and then I have to kind of be like, oh, like, do I know? Have we met before? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have we not? Uh, but yeah, nothing, nothing, nothing too crazy. Luckily, I'm, I'm yeah. quite a chill guy. So yeah. I know that's crazy good. Happens. That's good. I think what I do um, actually also want in the near future is just you know just a nice i think it's very good to have this support this like female Absolutely. support in your life as a guy especially if you find someone that's because the entrepreneurial lifestyle is very it's, tough. it's like people are like you know it's like yeah entrepreneurs come and speak like yeah it's tough it's tough you know we're going through things but then it's like spend time with one spend time with like, you know, I, I've had it sometimes where I'm, I'm maybe chatting with a girl and she'll say, why don't you think about me? You know, yeah. like, you want to know what I think, think about? about you know, I had Mark Brinkman the other day, yeah. um, uh, the founder of OTB, and he was like, you know, I wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning and I want to solve the world's problems. Exactly. <laughs> the guy's up at 4. And so it's like, it's not a thing of like, yeah, we're trying to seem special or anything. It's just you've really been you're passionate about a problem that exactly. you're just trying to solve. And it almost consumes you. Yeah. 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 And and I actually find it quite nice when you have someone that, that doesn't worry too much about how many times you've texted them, but then now and day they just come and like randomly pop into your life. Like when someone actually comes to me and just tries to speak to me, for example, yeah. I will speak to them. Yeah. I'll give you the full attention. Yeah. But it's like you, you do. You just get carried away. Yeah. Sometimes. Like your, your brain is just pulling you to yeah. the side. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 sad sadly enough, it's like um, uh, I think it happens a lot that a lot of uh, females want to associate themselves with ambitious guys, you know, guys with a mission. Yeah. And it sounds all nice and all like, yeah, let's let's win this together. But then when they don't get the attention. <laughs> yeah. And like when, but really, what do you think th this person requires in exactly. order to really achieve that mission, those ambition go the ambitious goals, and all that? It's like you also have to turn yourself because it's like it's like when you have someone that's constantly challenging you. It's yeah. a reflection to yourself. It's a mirror to yourself. You also Absolutely. need to. Absolutely. So I think yeah, but either way, I still think it's a very beautiful thing. I it's, man. Yeah. I I genuinely think with with a good woman by your side, yeah. you you'll be unstoppable. Do you have like, a Do you have a type? Uh, yeah, I do think I have a type. What's your, what's <laughs> but, your type? Why? <laughs> what's your type? Do, do the research. Yeah. But like, one thing I will say is that I think my number one love language, right? And like, the way I receive love is acts of service. Mm -hmm. You know, like someone who can understand that I'm trying to push this week. You mm -hmm. know, like, and there's so many things I need to cater to. If she in any way helps me do that, like, oh, um, babe, I packed you lunch because yeah. I know you have a you have a a lot of meetings today and you're probably yeah. not gonna have time to eat. I'm dead. Like yeah. I'm 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 in love already. Yeah. You know, it's because it's like you understand, you understand what's important to me. Yeah. And if that if if this is important to me and you understand it's important to me and you value that and you act towards it, it yeah. means a lot to me. So yeah. that's why I would say Acts of service is definitely the way, yeah. the way to my heart, without yeah. a doubt, without yeah. a doubt. Yeah, so nice. I appreciate, I appreciate a woman that can, that can bring that to the table. For so sure. you don't want to share your tab? Man, <laughs> I like, I like short hair. I like, <laughs> short I, hair. I, I like, I like girls with short hair. Really? Um, yeah, I like girls with short hair. Good personality. Um, a good Christian girl as well. Uh, you know, uh, someone with values. Uh, yeah. I, I like that, and that's that's kind of what I'm leaning towards. Christian kind, yeah. uh, short hair, little baddie. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm so, uh, yeah, yeah. That's 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 kind of my thing. Yeah, bad man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I would say actually, huh? Five minutes. Okay, I would say actually, kind of like personally, if I had to pick out my type. I think normally sometimes I would say rich girls yeah. or girls that come from stable families. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm is not there a reason why? Why do you think? Uh, the reason why is because I want someone that's not impressed by anything that I'm trying to do. Got you. you know, it's not a thing of like, yo, I want to be with him because this is so cool. Got it's you. like, because also what I've noticed with girls that come from, fa with that have fathers that usually get them anything and everything, yeah. nothing really matters to them anymore. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's like, um, 
it's it's like you don't hear these funny stories of oh i went on a date because he was offering me free food yeah. i didn't do anything with him you know there's no more uh, yeah. nonsense yeah. like that i feel you and i think uh, i think also just it, it also kind of strong father figures you yeah. know like it, you when someone has a dad out respect but it also doesn't take away from the fact that you also get you a lot of nice people that uh have different associations but rather i would say just someone hmm, someone that's conservative mm. as well in the sense of like they're not trying to be loud about everything they do they don't want to be anywhere and everywhere you know gotcha. just that's something i would say i think for a lot of girls it's like just because things are popping and trending you don't it doesn't mean you have to do that yeah it doesn't mean you have to be there yeah. you know it's like you know when 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 the when the king brings bread into the, uh, what it? when the king brings bread into the village all the peasants will run you know yeah, it's, yeah. it's yeah. like but not the queen yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know true, true, true. so it's like yeah i'm just saying i'm just saying yeah, uh, <laughs> no, that's, that, that, that's your type isn't it and, yeah. and, and it makes sense it makes sense to have your your type and your preference in that type of way yeah 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 but uh we could talk about girls all day on the other hand i think uh, you think at the end of the day you only get a reflection of what you are as you know i think that's a good yeah word. that's good and i think that's what that's what i i learned like if you want if you want to attract someone that you you think will be valuable mm. write down everything you want from them it's like i want my wife to be smart uh, christian kind um funny um, interesting whatever right mm. then take away wife and write myself i want myself to be smart oh. you do that if you use that that exact list i promise you you'll attract the the person that you you want to attract yeah. because you are you are them your yeah. reflection the person will be a reflection of you yeah love so it. if you if you're always getting into into stories <laughs> if none of if none of your relationships yeah. are working well and they yeah. always are you listening bad, to that? <laughs> and they always earn bad it's yeah. a reflection of you yeah. for sure sadly sadly yeah it's like what jordan peterson said uh, on one of his video clips he said you know you should really look at yourself when 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 you've been in like 5 10 relationships and all of them are ending and you come and say these people are so bad this one did this and it's like what's the common denominator it's you bro it's you, <laughs> it's you. yeah it's so you. thank you for sharing that i think a lot of people need that yeah. now let's get back a little bit into business again uh you met simon sinek huh i did you met simon sinek i met him how, in london how how was that experience man it was interesting yeah um I I was fascinated by Gymshark. Gymshark is like I don't know if you know the brand Gymshark. Yeah, yeah. Gymshark. I know. So I, I was in London and I was actually about to just go home and then yeah. I was like I saw the Gymshark shop and I was like oh, let me just go see because yeah. I actually wanted to check it out. Yeah. Walk into Gymshark, um I see Simon there. Yeah. Um we have a brief conversation yeah. we talk about me being the first Namibian he's ever met. Really? Stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. That's lovely. Um and he was and I asked him like what are you doing yeah. here? and he's like no I'm just um uh, chilling hanging yeah. out, you yeah. know. And then Um I was like, "Yeah, oh, great. Have it was nice chatting, have a mm. great time." And um and then and then he left. We took a picture together yeah. and he left. But it was a really really nice interaction. Yeah. yeah you didn't go a whole, "Can I have your number?" No, no, <laughs> no, no, no that's no, not the time for it, of yeah. course. I think sometimes you just have a good time and then part ways. Exactly. Hopefully exactly. one day you meet again. No, that's nice. a great story. I think he's a very inspiration inspiring leader, you know. I, I think big inspiration for a lot of people. I love what he's done. But I, anything that you've learned from him specifically that you think you've used in your life? Uh, I think the idea that uh, leaders eat last, mm-hmm. um, and the idea that organizations is really just a group of people that want trust among themselves. Yeah. You know, um, and yeah, yeah. I, there's a quote right here. I'm looking at it. it. Says a team is not a group of people that work together. A team is a group of people that trust each other. That's it. Exactly what you're That's saying. It. Uh, I mean, we're just going over what Simon Sinek. Some cynic was saying, right? Yeah. As 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 a leader, the idea is not to dictate what people must do, but to allow the team to feel like they're contributing, mm-hmm. and then um, yeah, allow the team to feel like they're contributing, and then take what they're saying, and then say this is the way we're going forward. So it's kind of like you, as as he puts it, leaders eat last. You kind of let them get the recognition and everything forward. You're kind of just helping the team understand each other and you're kind of the the middle point and service you actually work for everyone yeah, yeah instead of thinking like people work for you you work for everyone yeah, yeah. trying to make sure that they're good and so on so like when things go well it's the team's uh celebration when yeah. things go bad it's, it's the your leader's fault yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you, work, you work for everyone but i also think it's a it's the most um rewarding place to be mm-hmm. 
being in a position that people look up to you and you can actually change people's lives yeah. by working for them. And they will, if you, and that's why he's saying that you need a, a team with a very high trust because um, when they get that level of trust, they'll do anything. They'll do almost anything to um, to help you or the group reach reach its objectives. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Um, that's a great, that's what a great leader does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lovely. Thank you. Uh, I want to ask you now, Two last questions sure, so I can also it. let you go let's to your it. meetings and do business as usual. Bills still need to be paid. Exactly. <laughs> so um, the first question is going to be, who inspires CJ? Mm, mm. Good question. Yeah. Good question. Um, I've been inspired by most of the people I've been inspired by. Like, uh, do you know Stephen Bartlett? Mm-hmm. Stephen, yeah. Stephen Bartlett inspired me. So I was, I was following Stephen um, when he was like, just starting uh, social chain yeah. like and we're a similar age and so on so he's like one year older than me so mm. it was so fascinating to watch someone take this entrepreneurial journey mm. and just be a few mm-hmm. steps ahead yeah. of you and get that content that uh, context yeah that was so helpful yeah so that's part of the reason why i'm also trying to make sure that i'm producing a lot of content mm-hmm. is because i know how inspiring it can be to just have someone that's not too far yeah, fetched, yeah. I can't be inspired by Bill Gates. You yeah, know, like cool. his, t- we can hardly relate on, on many things. So, Stevens Black, he's trying to be in like social media companies, one year older than me, and he's pushing, he's pushing, he's pushing. Yeah. And I've seen him how he's developed into the yeah, person that he is today. True. So, his podcast is nice as well. His podcast is incredible. Yeah, something uh, for and us do you know, to look at. You know how Stephen started his podcast? With all and his with his computer, right? I think he under with a blanket over his head. And I was literally, I was listening to those podcasts. Yeah. Right? it was it was you literally called Diary of a CEO. Yeah. he would go through his diary yeah. and with a blanket on on his computer yeah. mic, recording it and yeah. saying, "This is what happened today, and this is what it made feel like. Um, this is what I learned today. His notes yeah. and stuff like that." So that was super insightful. So I'm trying to do yeah. the the same thing and use like my platforms like LinkedIn and yeah. and Instagram to do the same thing. And I've already heard people come to me like, yo, but this really helped or yeah. say, yo, please bring how to be popular back. Uh, you know, those type of things. So yeah, nice. so, I'm so saying yeah, it as well. Yeah, maybe. And I want to help out there wherever I can. You can look at yeah. it too. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, actually, okay, two more questions because it's a back-to-back question. What's the most ridiculous piece of advice you've ever received? Most ridiculous, like yeah. it just doesn't work. It's just nonsense, <laughs> man. I don't even know if I remember a specific one, man. Mm. But it's most of the time it's, it's advice from people you want nothing to be like. Yeah. Why, why, why on earth are you taking advice from people that you want absolutely nothing to be like? And this happens in our friendship circles. Like for example, you would be taking relationship advice from someone who you actively know hasn't been in a great relationship or the, the playboy of the group <laughs> right yeah and you actively take the advice so i don't think i have one but i would say don't be taking advice from anyone you don't want to, not nothing to be like mm. doesn't make sense yeah and what's the best piece of advice you've ever received a best piece of advice oh man i'm trying to think i've had so many so many golden nuggets yeah give us a good one it can be one or two good ones I'm trying to think. I'm thinking mm. from a business business perspective. Yeah. Um, well, this one always always reigns supreme for me. It's that you have to the right way to launch a product or idea or something like that is to just get it out there, mm-hmm. right? I think we tend to overthink and want to have everything be perfect, but you don't decide what is perfect. The market decides what is perfect. So. Getting things, something out there and getting people to give you feedback and how to change it or um, what it requires and so on is is actually really, really good advice. And I was listening to a podcast, Stephen's podcast, actually, and the guy was like, I think it's the CEO of Netflix. Mm-hmm. And the guy was like, every idea is a bad idea. Yeah. Every single idea you have is a bad idea. So your point is not to try and perfect your idea you won't be able to what you have to do is get your idea out as much as quickly as possible and then chip out all the bad stuff so all that's left is a good idea yeah that's that's the thing and no one will be able to tell you what the bad stuff is only the market will be like we don't like this take it out try something else we don't like this so it's about running tests and constantly so 
I've I've deployed this um, in my life by just increasing the frequency of something I want to mm. do. You know, like for example, if you want to get really good at podcasting, don't record one a week. Record five a week. Yeah. Right. Yo, yeah. Really, yeah. it's 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 frequency yeah. because you're getting the reps in. If yeah. you if you if you want to create content and you post once a week, your feedback loop of is course, so yeah. it's so it's so slow. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get six posts, six posts. Um, uh, you say post once a week. You're gonna get like four posts in a month. Yeah. You, know, you know, like how, what are you gonna learn from four posts? Mm -hmm. You know, so you start with high frequency. Like now, I'm really spending a lot of time and figuring out LinkedIn. I think it's the next big platform. And like I said, I think text-based platforms are going to be the ones that are, are going to change our industry and where the attention is going. I think with AI and everything, visuals are going to, it's going to be hard to tell what's real and what's not. Mm -hmm. And I think storytelling has always been there. Books have always been there. So text-based um, storytelling and platforms, I think, are the future and LinkedIn. So I'm spending a lot of time on LinkedIn. So I post twice a day on LinkedIn. I know people that don't post once a month. I post twice a day. And in two months, yeah. I'm going to be so much better than 90% of the people. Because yeah. I'm forcing myself to post twice a day. It's frequency. Yeah. I'm going to get feedback. I'm going to see what works. I'm going to see what doesn't. Frequency, 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 frequency. And then in two months, I'm going to be better. And then in six months, I'm going to be better. Yeah. In one year, I'm going to be even better. Yeah. Maybe two years from then, then I'll be incredible. Yeah. But uh, if you don't have the frequency, then you won't get there. Yeah, pretty good. That's nice. Uh, what's the last message you'd like to leave the people with? Uh, word of advice for young African entrepreneurs. Word of advice for young African entrepreneurs. Yeah. Here it is. One, the ideas you have and the company you want to start and so on is not going to be what you think it is at the end. Don't be married to your idea and think, oh, it has to be work like this or yeah this app has to be this is the plot of it this is why it needs to work the idea is that you're going on a path that's going to be up and down and you're trying to figure it out you need to be flexible enough to figure out where the market is leading you mm -hmm. and um and be curious enough to ask the questions that no one wants to ask right then you'll get to a point of where you're like oh i have something successful it's nothing like what i thought it would be but i was patient curious and eager enough to get there, right? Um, that's kind of, I think, the advice that I would, that I would give. Um, don't be married to your idea. It's going to change, and it should change, because every idea is a bad idea. Bad idea. <laughs> oh, my God. Every idea is my a bad idea. My moment is gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then... Uh, yeah, that's what, that's what I would say. Yeah. Thank you so much, CJ. It's been a good episode, and thank you so much for finally doing it. Some very good... Uh, yeah topics we've spoken about as well and hope to see you soon and i'm wish yeah so many ends yeah, <laughs> yeah. i'm wishing you all the best in thanks your journey you, ahead I'm, I'm vouching for you and i would love to help where i can thanks brother so i'm vouching for you and your podcast as well oh. i think you started something incredible just keep at it yeah thanks yeah. man thanks bro.